Uh, my question is, uh, you are stepping into this new role at a time when counties have not had a disbursement of funds for about four months, and it is causing a cash crunch there. And um, now that you're going to also be the chair of IBEC, uh, how do you uh, uh, tend to accelerate this and ensure that uh, services in the counties roll as they should be? Kyo. Uh, my name is Sidney Chazima. My question goes to what you've mentioned about national interests. And recently, while performing your duties as uh, the deputy president, you spoke before the judiciary at the 12th year's anniversary for the um, Supreme Court. And you mentioned that there need to be a place where the courts consider the national interest as opposed to the public interest. Someone may misconstrue this as the executive trying to exert its pressure on the courts. What would you make of this? Thank you. Those are very good questions. I would like to respond to them as follows. It is true there is um, a bit of cash disbursement delay for counties, which is unfortunate. But I think the context for, the, the context for that situation is that uh, this country in the last two years have come from a very difficult macroeconomic situation. And it has taken two years of hard work under the leadership of President William Ruto to tackle the macroeconomic stability of the country, stabilize the shelling, stabilize essential food uh, uh, prices, prices of essential commodities, including fuel, and so forth and so on. For the first time this month, inflation is at 2.7%, 2 2 the lowest in 17 years. The last time the inflation, inflation was at that level was in 2007, just before the post-election el uh, uh, election violence, at the peak of President Kibaki's best economic uh, situation. And therefore, the heavy lifting that the country has had to do is now behind us. We can only do better. I am going to convene as soon as possible uh, a consultative uh, forum under the auspices of IBEC. And I believe the short-term uh, short issue around disbursements should be tackled in a more uh, sustainable manner. Uh, so that we don't just release what is outstanding, but we find mechanisms of ensuring that we don't have uh, similar delays uh, in, in the days ahead. So that is something that I'm seized of. Just the way we have tackled other uh, 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 issues uh, and economic challenges, we're going to tackle the disbursement to counties promptly, and uh, that is what the Constitution requires that the national government must ensure that counties receive their funds within the required time. Secondly and lastly, I've been asked to comment about uh, the comments I made at the judges' conference. And um, at the judges' conference, I said, first and foremost, that conference was not a meeting between the executive and the judiciary. It was a conference for the court to introspect and reflect on how the judiciary uh, uh, has performed, especially the Supreme Court, in shaping the jurisprudence of our country and interpreting our constitution. And therefore, it was an opportunity to look at the successes, the challenges, what has been done correctly, and what perhaps needs to be relooked. It's in that context that I gave the views from where I sit uh, based on my legal background, I made the remark that I believe the Supreme Court of Kenya has done a fantastic job in interpreting the Constitution. For 12 years, what the Supreme Court of the Republic of Kenya has done is equivalent to what some Supreme Courts have done in 50 years. So we are very proud that our institutions are not only efficient, but they are on our trajectory of fast maturity. At that point, because it was a, a moment for introspection, I said, 
the jurisprudence that the court has given us about public interest is very refreshing and welcome. And then I remarked, going forward, as the Supreme Court consolidates its own jurisprudence and enhances it, perfects it, it is worth reflecting, even beyond public interest, whether our constitution allows of, of whether the, our constitution allows the court to distill existential values of the state. And I told at uh, the meeting that those existential values are found in two places. One in chapter one, which is the foundational chapter that establishes our country, defines what Kenya is, the map, the territory, the coordinates, and the fundamental principles, including devolution. And then, chapter 14 on national security. Article 238 in particular, contains some elements of what one would call existential and primordial elements of the existence of Kenya. That Article 238 says that there are certain core interests of Kenya that must be protected. And that's why the organs of national security are established, to make sure that Kenya does not disappear. It survives. Territorial sovereignty of Kenya. That's why our KDF will do whatever it takes to make sure that other nations, enemies of Kenya, don't overrun us. The, the territorial integrity of Kenya, that no foreign country can violate our airspace, our land, or our sea space. And then it goes on to discuss a few other existential, uh, very, very critical foundational interest of the nation. And so what I was asking, I said maybe the courts needs to think whether we can have a hierarchy of national interests. The general public interest on everything else and very basic and existential interest on which the survival of the nation rests. Because, for example, when we have had, for example, challenges in allowing the people of Kenya to exercise their rights, which are protected in the Constitution, we have seen, for example, that that right, for example, need also to be balanced in the need to protect the country and constitutional institutions. Because we saw an attempt to violate the chief justices' chambers by people who are expressing their rights, which is correct. But you see, if you destroy the emblems that makes the state to exist, burn down parliaments, you know, those are extreme measures. And all what I say, just to be brief, I was not prescribing. I was just asking the judges to provide leadership, as is their mandate in the Constitution, to tell us whether there is a hierarchy of interests. Because the other commercial issues, the public interest is easily discernible. But sometimes there could be a conflict between what is popular or what the public is saying and the existence of the state. And I provided evidence at a, a chapter one of the Constitution, which is the foundation of principles, and the Article 238 that tells our organs of national security to protect the borders of Kenya, to protect the existence of Kenya and its institutions. That balance the court should help us to interpret. I know I've spoken a lot of English, but uh, that's what it is. I wish you well. It is good to see you. We are going to have regular interactions. Um, uh, on a light note, uh, you know the other job was a bit uh, uh, constraining because of the operational uh, support that required me to be where uh, uh, where action was taking place in terms of defending the country's vital interest of homeland security. But with a new role, I'll be much more available. 
We are open to the input of the people of Kenya. We are open to even positive criticism from the media, from civil society, so that we can all co converge our various views and opinions on how we can build a stable, solid democracy called Kenya. Azadeli Sara Mungu Wabariki.